The picture you see here is a picture of a dismantled house. Uh, these are Nyayo underground torture chambers which were being dismantled by the Moi regime in the last few days of its time. What happened is that they were trying to demolish it and then uh, structural engineers told them, advised them, that uh, when you dis demolish it the way you are doing it, you know, it was uh, structured in such a way that uh, it held the whole building. So if you demolish it, the whole building will come down and it will crumble on you. So they stopped halfway the way you see it. There is a saying that is it the dog that wags the tail or is it the tail that wags the dog? The truth of the matter is that Nyayo House was constructed around the torture chambers. I have recorded a few tapes before, especially during the first days of this YouTube, where I talked about its structure, its uh, method of punishing and so on. I would request one to watch those so that I do not repeat myself here. The person who gave Moi the idea of Nyayo Torture Chamber, of Provincial Torture Chamber, was President Ceausescu of Romania. He's the one who came up with the idea and they were to convert the provincial commissioner's office. If you go at the roundabout next to Nyaya House, there is a small museum house there. Initially, it used to be the district commissioner's office and it later became the provincial commissioner's office. The last, provincial, the last district commissioner, we used to have six provinces and one extra district. That was Nairobi. So it was later decided that Nairobi be made a seventh province. The last district commissioner for Nairobi was Bill Martin. From the word Bill Martin, you you may mistake you may be mistaken to think that Bill Martin was a Mzungu. No, he was a mulatto, Yani Chotar. Among Kipsigis, we have so many mulattos, including uh, Kiptuma Rapmanyinya and others and others. So he was a Kipsigis called Bill Martin. And the fa he handed over to a provincial commissioner. Who was the first Nairobi provincial commissioner? You will be shocked. The first provincial commissioner in Nairobi area was Simon Nyachai. Simon Nyachai was later transferred to Rift Valley around 1971-72 as the provincial commissioner. And he later became the provincial commissioner central province before becoming chief secretary. Now, I wanted, uh, during, during the Dr. Kingori's interview, I was asked about a normal day in Nyayo torture chamber. Somebody in the comment section said that I was parlaying of questions. Another one said no. It is Dr. Kingore who is asking me more questions before I answer others. I will tell you this. I was interviewed for two hours and Dr. Kingori is given 45 minutes, or not 45 minutes, 25 minutes to air on TV. And even after the interview of two hours, still we did not even scratch the surface. 
That is why an idea of podcast and this channel to explain more came up. Uh, so it is not that uh, I was parlaying questions. It is not that uh, Dr. Kingoru was asking many questions. It is the question of time. Uh, I'll answer Dr. Kingori's uh, question, which was uh, initially intended to be the purpose of this shooting. Uh, the purpose of this shooting was to explain an ordinary day in Nyayo Tocha Chamber. But it will only take two seconds, two sentences. So I decided that the tape should be a geographical tour of Nyayo Tocha Chambers. But I'll still answer the two sentences. Nyayo Tocha Chamber had only two things. It was a boring place, dark place that uh, the only light was there was 24 hours electricity light. So there was no way you could know day from night. And in many cases, you can differentiate day from night from meals. But if you spend days without being given food, denied food, uh, deliberately, then there is no way you can know day from night. So it was, it was a long, uh, it was a long, boring time. And it was also full of torture, which I will explain later. Which I'll explain later. Uh, I was saying, I'll give you a geographical tour of the place for, uh, the, it had three entries. One entry was the way the victims used to enter. You would be blindfolded, then taken round at the back of the underground parking. Uh, on, one, on one end, there is uh, <coughs> the torture chamber, underground. And in those torture chamber, which I'll emphasize later, there was a lift. In Nyayo House, there were three different types of lifts. There was the general lift that everybody used, <coughs> which went to every three or four floors, you used one door to come out. Then there was the lift that was for VIP, <coughs> which you use a key to recall, open and use. And then the third one was this small one, which <clears throat> was from the torture chamber. And it was as small as a toilet, such that four people could be crumbled in, in uh, and it stopped nowhere. It had only two places, the topmost floor and the torture chambers. That is where these two lifts, the, the, this, it, it, there was no way it could stop anywhere between the ways. On the top floor, the two top floors were occupied by special branch. <clears throat> but as I've said before, we had two types of special branch. We had the normal intelligence officers for Nairobi area, and we had the special team of torturers. The torturers were segregated and they were in a certain area. So you could come all the way from the torture chambers you go to their offices, to the torturer's offices, and do not confuse this torturer's office with the normal special branch offices. From there, you'd meet a place where they used to have, uh, you, you, you'd reach a place where they, it was so dark that you could not even know. And you, I've heard from victims that, uh, the, most of the people they knew, the, the tormentors, they knew them from voice. So you are in a place, there is only light that is surrounding you, and you are completely naked. The type of torturers and whatever, I have already recorded that. But they would use systems such as quoting Bible. They would even use a woman called Jerry to harass you. And they would use the police, bad cop, good cop. They would use even food and other things to uh, 
entice you to get information from me. Now that is the top floor. Then you go down to the ground floor, to the underground floor. These things, have you entered a very busy building where we have, uh, like KICC, if I uh, l uh, lack of a better place, you go to the toilets, you find cubicles lining up, one, two, three, you knock and, uh, until you reach the one which has nobody, then you enter. So cells were that way. Cells were that way. And I want to say how the cells were constructed. One, even if you made noise of whatever nature, it will never reach the ground floor. So it was underground. Two, uh, before I continue that, I wanted to tell you the other two entries. I talked of the entry through the vehicle. The other entry I talked was, the, uh, the second entry was through the lift. You could come from top floor up to that. The third, the third one, which now you can use, is that you go to the reception where the APs are. You, there are lifts on, on your left and on your right. Then there is a place where there are steps for those people who do not want to use uh, lifts. The, the steps are on one side and on the opposite side you'll see the steps going to the ground floor. So you follow that and you go. I think I've cleared with the three entries there. The one where prisoners would come blindfolded. Then the one which you can use by going through uh, the AP reception there. And then instead of turning to the left or along the lifts, you turn right or you go downwards. Uh, that is the third. Now the, the cells were built in such a way that they were down there. And they had three different things. They had, oh, apart from light, they had a speaker. They had water. And they had the capacity of making the room be very hot and very cold. So <clears throat> the speaker was meant to create illusions. I don't know of any Nyayo House victim who was a woman, maybe there was, but for a man staying for so many days, what goes through your mind? You think about your family, you think about your children, you think about your wife, you think about... That is when all the, all the victims told me, you would hear the sound of a woman. Uh, I mean, nobody tells you what it is, but you hear, you know, women with high heels, there is that ka 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 So you, you, you hear a sound, which you conclude that it must be a woman walking. That is a torture. In the 80s, they came up with a system, human rights, where before 80s, a, a person arrested could be uh, broken all his limbs or whatever and no action would be taken. But human rights came such that the torture now moved from physical to mental. So you imagine, you don't know how many days you have stayed there. You don't know what day of the week is. And then suddenly you hear footsteps of a woman. You even think that it is a woman who's coming to your police, to your cells. But then, from there you hear sound of kids, whatever. Those things were, I would say, and I think people who were prisoners there would be better to, to explain all and every sound they had. But the sound was there to play with your mind. I had forgotten that at the reception, there were two APs who used to monitor that place used to monitor that place so that should any prisoner feel sick or anything or, or if nobody guards you, there are times when they come to collect you, they may have found you have escaped or anything. So you, the, the, the two APs, administration police, were there to guard you. Uh, I talked of three things in there. Uh, I've talked of sound. I've I will talk about water. On the best of the days or nights, there was just cement there, no blanket, no nothing, you sleep there. Longco, 
in a normal prison uh, there is a bucket where you okay you you see all the human waste there and whatever but it is a bucket but in Nyayo house there was no bucket so you just go to one corner re relieve yourself shortco and longco one uh, whatever you place you choose it goes that way nobody removes them days follow you pile uh, ya jana ya juzi ya nini and then there was uh, water water could be brought there so you reach a place where water reaches a certain level anko or even sana sana magoti you are not given any water to drink you see that water has is mixed with your human waste both longko and shortko you feel uh, thirsty you drink that you have no food whatever it is survival for the fittest i've talked of uh, sound i've talked of water and now i'll talk about weather there is a time when that room can be made freezing point imagine the clothes that you are arrested with several days ago are the same clothing that you have the clothing have been the clothing have gone to uh, are wet because of uh, the water now suddenly it is uh, mombasa hot desert hot uh, you you are still having those clothes when you go to sleep you go to the only good thing about that place is there were no mosquitoes there <clears throat> and that is what various people faced in nyayo house to church i talked of three there was uh, music there, there was a mic microphone which brought in not music but sound outside there which was meant to confu to, 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 to psychologically torture you so, uh, there was water that is second then there was heat and whatever and that is how nyayo house torture chambers were in your comment section please direct me on other issues that i can because as you have seen this particular recordings came up because of uh, what i was provoked by people to comment and uh, thank you for uh, be uh, waiting for so long to listen to this it's my pleasure that <clears throat> if we forget the wrongs we did we may do it again although as i told dr kingori even if you brought hitler himself kenya will never ever go back to that it will be part of history 